from one year to the other grew like more than six percent so it was pretty a stunning result so when would you say it is time to actually consider to split the team. When you start to see that the portfolio of the account managers gets saturated, you have a new business that starts to be like below 5%. That's when we start to think about the idea of a splitting. It's of course good to look at the metrics, but when you only look at the metrics, you may get some misleading idea. It has not been working very well. I will explain you why. So let me introduce you to the CRO of the highest valued unicorn in Spain, Giuseppe Mozillo. And the unicorn I'm talking about is Job and Talent. Job and Talent is a world leading platform that operates as a marketplace for temporary workers with a focus on blue collar industries. Think of logistics, call centers, data entries, and so forth. And so on one side, it connects companies in need of temporary blue collar workers with a pool of available workers using technology and data. And then on the other side, companies can find suitable candidates for their job requirements, ensuring efficient workforce management and quality staffing. Now, about their go-to-market strategy. It is a land and expand strategy inside carefully selected logos. And while this was a very effective growth strategy at the beginning, it eventually faced a bump on the road. Because you see, the sales organization at Job and Talent used to be very simple. In each market, there was a sales manager leading reps that were responsible for the full sales cycles, landing and expanding the accounts. But as you can imagine, once a rep has too many accounts inside their portfolio, what happens? Well, new business starts to decrease. And when that happened to Job and Talent, that's also when they knew they had to rethink their current approach. Now, their solution was to split the team in two. So they split the team in a hunting team, focusing on new business, and a farming team, focusing on account management. Now, this transition, it was necessary, but it faced a lot of hurdles. And in this interview, we go deep with Giuseppe in their learnings so that you can fast track this transformation if you ever need to do this. And for your information, by now, new business has grown by 60%, 60, and totals 12% of total revenue compared to 6% from before the transformation. And all of that came at no extra cost, just a simple change in the organizational structure. So please enjoy my conversation with Giuseppe. So, in the preparation, you mentioned that Job and Talent um, recently had to restructure the sales organization, uh, essentially moving from the 360 sales rep to really splitting the team into hunters and farmers. And so I think that's particularly going to be interesting for the listeners that also want to develop a mature revenue department where they actually might have to go through that step. So can you please, um, in a first step, you know, just briefly explain what the experience was all about, you know, and, and then we'll dive in uh, into more details about it. Yeah, so we, you know, we started as probably many companies out there with a 360 model. It makes a lot of sense because at the beginning you don't have clients. You have to, you know, you have to start uh, uh, your journey, and therefore, like, it does make sense to have account managers that are only doing account management. You know, it's better to have uh, uh, just one team, um, and that's what we did. And it it was going fine for for the initial phase, no. And uh, actually, every time we opened the new market, it was even going fine for the initial phase of that given market, no. The, um, the problem that we encountered pretty soon is that uh, imagine that you have an account manager that starts to hunt for new logos and you get the first logo, the second logo, the third logo. Then you have to nurture those logos, not because our model is land and expand. So when we enter a logo, we make up to 5, 10% of the share of wallet. Then you want to go up to 60, 70, you know, like um, on average, you know. Uh, therefore, you have to work a lot on those logos. So when you start to have like 10, 20 big logos in your portfolio, you spend all day on nurturing those logos and making sure that they grow. You don't have time to hunt. So what was happening is that uh, um, in our more mature countries, you know, like uh, where account managers were already at top, it was getting slower and slower. You know, like the 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 the, the, the growth of the organic uh, side of the business, and it's of course true that you can add more people to the to the sales team now, and you can start that fresh again. But it's also true that it's very difficult to find the very good salespeople, and therefore, like you know, like you want to make sure that you get the best out of the team that you that you have, no? So mm, that's when we started to think about the idea of uh, splitting, splitting the team, no? And getting uh, uh, pure hunters on one side, looking after uh, new logos, and then uh, pure farmers, so uh, car managers on the other side, uh, just involved in, um, uh, in in growing the logo, no? That was the original idea, and. Uh, you know, it was difficult 
but uh, uh, ultimately we 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 really managed to do so no like so we have a system today where uh, you know the the hunters are just uh, getting until you close the deal and then they are passing immediately after the deal to an account manager the account manager though is present already in the last phase of the closing so it's not a completely new phase when uh, you, you know you like you 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 get you narrate the the, um, the logo so that uh, at least you know already what's the situation uh, about you know something that a lot of companies out there are doing but uh, you know i think that each one has their own experience in in having this transition each one has their own focus about you know like where to put the effort and uh, yeah that was also the case uh, the case for us interesting i'm sure we'll dive deeper into uh, into that system but can you also maybe share like what was the the output what were, what were the results um of that transformation yeah, the result was uh, quite, I mean, it's a recent uh, change now that we're still doing in some of the countries. We started from okay. Spain, which was our most mature country, but in Spain, we already did it like uh, uh, last year, it was already in place. So we already have data no, on, uh, on that change. And uh, it was pretty good because we were able to um, to increase a lot the, the new business, both in terms of the share of the new business over the total revenue you know in the in the previous years uh, it was around six uh, seven eight percent something like this of the total revenue and then you know like when we did the change it went in the first year after doing the change it went up to 12 percent wow. of the total revenue you know uh, but also in, in absolute terms so it was not only the share of the revenue but it was also like the growth of the new business mm in absolute terms from one year to the other it grew like more than six percent so it was pretty a stunning uh result that's interesting yeah because uh like you mentioned you didn't have to hire new salespeople yep. to do that you did it with the existing uh people in place you just changed change the structure yeah. to, to be so, precise to be precise we and and something that i would uh, uh really suggest to consider to the people that are looking at uh this, doing this movement we we had to and get a new leader for the hunting team. So, you know, we took our existing oh, yeah. team, we started to split between who was having a profile for hunting and who was having a profile for farming. And then the existing leader stayed in charge of the account manager team, whereas we had to find a new leader for the hunting team. I think that's something that in our case, it was needed. We didn't realize at the beginning, it was a mistake. And then, you know, we soon realized and we fixed it. It was needed, but, but you know, it it worked. That's interesting. Do you then did you then uh, add an extra layer of hierarchy? As in, was it sales manager and the three hundred and sixty sales rep to sales manager, hunter, sales manager, farmers, and a sales director on top? Or no, 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 no. There was not a common uh, sales director for both groups, but both groups okay. were directly reporting uh, and are directly reporting into into the country leader. Let's say so. Who, okay. who is who is the the CEO of the country? Okay, so there was not an extra step of hierarchy. It was just that the two groups got split, and each each group was having a, a sales leader. As before, there was a leader, you know, for the 360 team. Okay, makes sense. Hi guys, once per quarter we are hosting the We Are Sales Virtual Summit, a two to three hours long free virtual event during which we'll deep dive on a specific theme. See this as an online training where we'll invite front runners to showcase their cutting edge practices that have been field tested and have proven to be effective. So the next one will be about how to leverage AI in sales, which will take place on November 9th, 2023. Again, the event is entirely free and you can simply register via our website. All right, let's go back. So I would love to go a little bit deeper on how you actually approach this. Uh, so what was the step-by-step -step, um, process to really introducing that change and transformation to, into the team? Can you explain that? Yeah, absolutely. So as I said before, no, like first of all, you have to assess the team that you have, at least in our experience, no? and, uh, and you have to decide who goes into one group and who goes into the other group. Okay, so that is perhaps the easy part. <laughs> you, you can make mistakes, but then you can fix that. So it, it's like not, not a big deal. The second thing is that uh, you have to reallocate the current portfolios because, of course, if you are moving some people from farming to hunting, you know the portfolio that these people used to have needs to be reallocated. Okay, so you have to just decide that the way you want to reallocate those portfolios to the account managers. Yeah. The third thing that you have to do is to think about the incentives because, of course, you cannot have the same uh, commission system that you had uh, uh, before. Maybe that one is still applicable for the account manager, but not even. No, probably you have to think about the two different uh, ways to incentivize the people. No, 
So on one side, we decided to incentivize account manager on the portfolio growth. Portfolio growth from year to year, excluding the new business, as it was not depending on them. Though, whenever you had the new business, it will count for your target to reach your quota. Okay, so you don't set, you do not put it in the target, but if you get it along the way, it it will count to get to your target. Okay, okay. I will explain later why this is important. In the first case, in the in the hunting side, um, we set a very um, simple uh, incentive system, which was on uh, on new revenue. No? But again, uh, we set the target on new revenue that were counting only after the account was considered activated. Activated for us means that the account needs to uh, get an invoice of more than 50k euro per month. So imagine that you land a new logo and that logo is generating a 10k euro per month, that logo doesn't count for you, you know, as, as okay. to reach the target, okay? It only starts to count when you pass the bar of 50k euro per uh, every month, okay? Interesting. And does that mean that when you have like uh, that initial deal landed of 10k a month, for example, do you transmit it already to the account manager or do you have to wait until it's activated that you reach the 50k? You transmit it, you transmit it, but okay. as it doesn't count for you, psychologically, you will be on top of it until it gets to 50 And, that, and you, you, you're going exactly in the direction that I was, uh, you know, uh, thinking about uh, uh, explaining because uh, what we wanted to build were, and it, this is after a lot of tries, eh? it's not that day one we were already with this system and everything. That's was, why it's uh, interesting you know, to have this discussion. It's, yeah, uh, exactly. So this is the end result, no? But we experimented a lot of things and uh, finally we, we, we end up building a system where you have actually a relation, strict relationship between the two groups to make sure that they are supporting each other. So in the first case, you have the hunters that are closing logos, but those logos are not valid until they pass the 50k. So those hunters, uh, even if day one, they pass the logo to the account manager, will still be on top until the logo is properly working, you know? So that's good because they will, you know, help the account manager or whatever is needed. On the other side, you have the account manager that is also very interested in getting new logos because uh, to reach their quota, you know, they have their existing logos, but then the new logos are like uh, free, you know, like in the sense that they add to the yeah. quota, but they were not considered in the target. So therefore, like, it's very good for them to get new logos because they, it will help accelerating, you know, their possibility to reach their quota. So it was a, a mixed incentive system that is giving like both parties an interest in cooperating, you know, with the with the other uh, parts. Otherwise, what happens is that maybe the, the, the guy uh, who is a hunter, you know, is just interested in signing the deal and then, you know, hand away and forget about it, no? And mm -hmm. on the other side, the account manager doesn't want to have nothing to do with the new logo because it's way more complicated than working on your existing logo. So, you know, like it's, it's a bit like this. So, so this was something that was uh, really important for us to, 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 to measure, to, to make sure that, the, you know, both groups were going in the same way. The second thing that I would consider very important was uh, uh, the, the focus, you know, that you gain with this strategy. And, yeah. and the focus means one target. So I'm a, I'm a salesman and I don't have to think about landing new logo, but also growing the existing one, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I have one target in mind, that's it. You know, like I only have to grow my portfolio. I only yeah. have to land a new business. So that's very powerful, no? Also because you can be way more specific, you know, like uh, now it's not about growing the portfolio. So whatever comes in is good. No, now it's about landing a new logo and they can be very specific on what type of logo you have to land, what sector, what size, you know, like I can be very specific because it's just one target so you can be hyper-focused, you know, like there's, there's no mix. Oh, that's interesting. But how far can you go with that? Because I, I, I agree to the point of, you know, you have to have focus, uh, but where do you draw a line, you know, because you can indeed say, yeah, take a look at the industry, take a look at the maturity of the account, take a look at the, the growth of the accounts, so, you know, where do you, what, what's your thought on that? Is there, uh, a draw that you can take or you go as, as, as focused as you can? We have been trying to go as focused as, as we could um, for, for a long time. You always make a little bit of exception here and there, you know, like, but it's on a request basis, no? Like it's, it's not like a completely free market. So we've been trying to be as focused as possible because I, every time we have been a bit more flexible saying, hey, it doesn't matter what logos you bring in as long as you reach your quota. Um, it has not been working very well. I will explain you why. 
Um, as I mentioned to you, like the, the, what we offer is a platform, it's a tech platform that works according to certain type of processes, a certain type of, uh, of uh, uh, you know, input to give a certain type of output. So if you go uh, too far away from, uh, from, from that, you know, like then the platform is probably not giving the best result anymore. Let's make a very simple example so that you will understand. The platform is, is built around standardized process for big companies, no? So, so for example, uh, uh, you know, there will be a client X in logistics that will ask for 100 warehouse men for their new warehouse to be built outside of uh, London, okay? And, you know, it works very well in that type of uh, situation. But then let's say that you bring on board a, a tiny restaurant asking for two waiters um, in a remote area. And on top of that, the owner of the restaurant is directly managing the, um, the, the restaurant and wants to like uh, um, meet the people, understand, you know, their uh, mm -hmm. sort of uh, personal feed, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So of course, you know, like that's not really fitting, you know, like the processes that we have in the, in the platform, no? And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, as long as we have a back office, as I was telling you to guarantee that the service is, is good, the back office is not really taking care of this kind of things, you know, like is more making sure that, you know, the, the people will be on time, they will be paid right and, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. No? So, so that's why we try to be as focused as uh, possible. Now, as we keep evolving our uh, platform with more and more features and more and more functionality where uh, um, companies can uh, uh, more and more customize their journey, you know, like in terms of what they would like to do, no, they would like to build their own shift, they would like to uh, do the blocking in a certain way, et cetera, et cetera, we can, of course, you know, open a bit the scope. Mm -hmm. no, so that I would think make that sense. The that two would things will, will go along. So we started very focused because we, we also need to be to make sure that the service was good. And then, you know, as we go along the way, we can open up a little bit. Yeah, yeah, you can expand your, uh, your, your ICP. Um, to your point about, um, because you mentioned the first step was really splitting the team. Um, and you said it, that was probably the most easy part, which I, I thought was kind of funny because I wouldn't have expected that to be per se the easiest part. Uh, but still, I'm interested to know, like, how did you then guys uh, decided who would go to which team? Was it the, the sales rep that could decide it for themselves? Had you guys tried to influence or, you know, tried to, to see with them which team would be, would be best for them? So how did you approach that? Well, we did ask them what was their preference, if they would uh, uh, like to go to one team or the other. And uh, some of the people were very clear, some other were having that, so you have all sorts of situation now, but we, we did ask them, you know, like um, uh, the preference. Uh, then, of course, we, we tried to drive a little bit also the, the choice, you know, because we have been with them for a long time, with, with some of them for a long time, and we knew them, we knew how they work under certain type of pressure, with uh, both, both areas you have pressures, you know, in one area you have a certain type of pressure, in the other area you have another, but, uh, you know, we kind of, uh, you know, knew uh, what was going on and we, we tried to, you know, to, to drive them a little bit. Um, essentially, what we did was uh, look at their past performance and look at uh, how good they were in uh, in one case of the or, or the other, you know, and I think that's pretty clear when you can work on previous data uh, from from those uh, group of people, it's tough when you have new people. No, when you have when you're hiring yeah. a new guy, you don't know if he's going to be a good hunter or a good account manager, etc. But when they've been with you, you know if they are super good at opening doors, or you know if they are super good at building a relationship, or if they are super good at ensuring that and, you know that the, the, the quality of the service is super smooth. And so, depending on that, you try to drive their decision. I think that that's the big difference. They were already with us, so we had data. Yeah, yeah. another advantage of indeed working with an existing team. Um, I can also imagine that when you split the team uh, in two separate teams that also have to work together, uh, you know, I, I can think already of the marketing and sales misalignment, the SDR not communicating with the AE as it should be, or AEs with customer success. So I can imagine that in some way you might have experienced things like that as well with the hunters and farmers. I guess that the remuneration system was already a first initiative to work on that, but were like other things or were there other issues or was it actually also a real issue that, that communication alignment? The communication was an issue. Um, 
one part was solved with incentives, as I was explaining before, that was like a very important move, you know, to make sure that they, they were going towards the same direction. That changed uh, a lot the picture. Another part was solved with uh, uh, something that also took a little bit of time to implement, but finally was working, which is uh, a, a deep, what we call a deep onboarding. Okay, what's a deep onboarding? So fundamentally, um, when you are starting to get into the closing phase uh, of, uh, of a new logo, you get the account manager on board and uh, uh, the person is going to participate, the person or someone from their team is going to participate to do all the final uh, phases. Why? One reason is to make sure that uh, the client gets a knowledge with the, the, this account manager and then therefore there's no like a, a, an issue for the hunter to go away after. The other big reason is knowledge transfer because one of the biggest reasons why communication is not working good is that the knowledge is is not transferred from one thing to the other you know like in the end it's it's not even because maybe the two will pass against each other but it's just that you know for whatever reason normally because the process is not structured there is not transfer of this knowledge you know what the clients exactly want uh what's going to be like uh the the you know like the the, the pricing type the the payment terms uh, and everything it, it it seems basic but a lot of times it's it's not fluently going from one side to the other and then you have the issues no because maybe the hunter promised something and then you know the camera just doesn't know it it's not written anywhere etc uh, etc et no like because it happens a lot to close a deal a hunter normally goes the extra mile and uh, you know start to promise the, the moon and then you know like you exactly. get problems no so that deep onboarding uh, very structured, you know, with a, a proper format. You, unless you feel that format, you cannot go forward. You cannot, uh, you know, start working, etc. It was also a fundamental uh, thing to do. Okay, interesting. And so that onboarding was always with the customer, as in it's it's the onboarding towards the client, right? Or is it an onboarding for the account manager to take over from the hunter? Sorry, you're right. There's there's actually we we call it deep onboarding, but it's two onboarding. You know, like the first one is uh, uh, between uh, the hunting team and the farming team. In fact, without the customer, the second one is with the customer. So it's the two teams together with the customer. So, but both of them are necessary. You cannot do just one. That's good. That's good though, because I was also go going to ask you about the customer perspective. If they have put their trust with one sales rep, but then from one day to the other, they get like another contact person. Maybe that could have been like a, some kind of a friction. Like, I don't know you, I don't trust you yet. Like, why should I work with you? But so that with that onboarding, you also try to, uh, to take but, care but of that. But that's the key. No, it's not only the onboarding. It's that in the final phase of closing a customer, uh, the, the account manager yeah. is already present. He's go, start to go together to the meeting with the, 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 the hunter. So that, you know, like you get already like this feeling of, okay, it's this other person, the one that is going to carry on my, my my service no okay okay hi guys i quickly want to let you know that we are doubling down on this podcast and by so doing we are looking for the better revenue stories out there so if you like what you hear please give it a like or a follow it is a simple click on a button but that click would mean the world to us all right let's go back gotcha um are there like advantages of the 360 sales rep that you're now kind of missing because you have to work with those separate teams? There are, there are advantages. Uh, um, the fact that uh, the account manager knows the uh, their specific sector or region inside out um, because they are there every day with the client. The, every problem is, uh, you know, coming out, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, it's super powerful. And it's really powerful when you approach a new client because uh, you generate immediately trust, not because sure. uh, um, any sort of question, doubt that, the, that this new potential prospect may have, you can solve on the spot, no? This is something that the hunter will never have because the hunter are focusing on the, just on the initial part, on the closing, and therefore, you know, they are not really involved in, uh, you know, in the, in the day-to-day -day issues the that are going yeah. up. So, so that part, you get with the 360, you don't get with this model that I'm, that I'm mentioning now, no? Uh, but of course you have to do some compromise. So, it, you, you know, you cannot have uh, it all before. Like, uh, I would say that's the, the biggest thing I'm missing it, is that one. You know, the fact that... That's, uh, um, that's a good one. Yeah, um, that, yeah because I, I can imagine when you now are doing the, uh, the geographical expansion that you will still start with that 360 model. And then from a certain point, you will start to split the team. 
So when would you say it is time to actually consider to split the team? I mean, I, I don't think there is an exact timeline that uh, is uh, just replicating, uh, you know, in the same way in every country because it depends on the quality of uh, uh, the people that you, you manage to hire in the team. It depends on uh, how good it's going, the performance of the company in the country. It depends on uh, if you have a lot of cross-country uh, sales, for example, you know, like if we open a new country in Europe, it's very different from opening a new uh, the U.S., for example, not because in the end, you know, in Europe you have a lot of cross-country sales, and maybe you open a country, and day one, you already have a decent portfolio of clients because you have a lot of clients in other regions of Europe that are just waiting for you to open in that new country. Sure. Right? So I, I would not, I would not be able to give you a, a single answer saying, hey, after one year you change. No. It's, no, it's but when are you there start... maybe are there maybe any performance metrics that you particularly took it took a look at? Yeah, absolutely. When you start to see that uh, the the portfolio of the of the account managers gets saturated, no, it means that uh, it does. You know, you you have a new business that starts to be like below five percent yeah. of the portfolio. You know, like it's pretty critical. Not below five percent. It's okay, still contributing, but it's pretty meaningless. No. Um, so st stuff like this are, are like early signs that the portfolio is getting saturated and you need, to, you need to move. Was, yeah. it, was it easy to say that the solution that you now have uh, introduced was actually the right path to solve that problem? Because I can imagine that you, you maybe saw that, that metric or that issue and you thought maybe we, we got to do something, but was it clear that that was the actual thing you had to do? So... Um, well, you also have to listen no, to what your teams are, are telling you because it's, it's of course, good to look at the metrics, uh, but when you only look at the metrics, uh, you may get some misleading uh, idea. I'll, I'll make an example. One of the one solution that we tried in the early times was, uh, okay, let's still keep the 360, but what we will do, we will have like some people who will have a portfolio of just hold, you know, so year on year you do the same revenue you're just holding the client and your mission is to not lose revenue with those clients and other people will have a, a portfolio that needs to grow either by developing clients that are at very early stage you know like maybe they are just one year into into the portfolio or getting new new clients no um but then quickly you will find yourself again in the same situation no and then when you talk to the team you know the team will, st will tell you it's it's not only the numbers you know it's also the fact that you really have to spend a lot of time you know like uh, when, when you get a client it doesn't matter if it's a, a super new client that will grow next year or if it's a stable client you still have to spend a lot of time and you know like it quickly gets saturated not the time that you have so so mm, you know after Hearing a lot, you know, we, we, we decided to take this other way. Um, also, it depends on the team you have. And in our case, we have very mixed team because we are quite open when we look for salespeople. You know, like it's not that we're getting only one single type of salespeople, no? So, you know, we, we happen to have teams where you had people that were saying, uh, uh, I want to really focus on this account because I think it's strategic for us and it can give a lot in the future, etc. And you have... Uh, uh, people that were saying, uh, uh, I don't have time to go after new logos and I want to go after new logos. I don't want, you know, to, to, to waste too time with the problem that happened in a client. So, so that was also spontaneous, not to say, hey, you know, we have two profiles Those here. are good signals. Yeah, so, for yeah. sure. Yeah. No, that's interesting. But that's coming so, from the fact that, again, when we hire people, you know, we, we have been not usually open in the sense that if, if someone is good, is good, you know. It doesn't really matter if, uh, you know, it's more good for this, more good for that. It's, it's like, it's a good guy. Let's get him. At at the beginning, or would you say that now? Because at the beginning, the at the beginning. At the now beginning. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, now that we have uh, separate teams, we, we have to be a bit more yeah. specific. More. I would think that makes sense. Um, so the, the two different teams, um, do they work? I mean, are there like pairs of people that work together? Because you also mentioned like there is a focus uh, on the type of industry, for example. So do you have like a, a hunter for a certain industry that works together with like one, two, three, maybe a little bit more colleagues, but also from a specific industry or how does that work? It, it does happen. Yes, you do have this uh, type of situation. Yeah, especially in terms of uh, industries, especially in terms okay, of industries. Okay. 
Yeah, so that you also, also helps a little for... bit of gener- of uh, regional split depending on how big is the territory, no? Like, um, but but in in general, they are focused on certain verticals. Okay, gotcha. So in in hindsight, like if you could do it all over again, like what would be you know the first thing that you would do differently? This I don't think we did wrong in starting with a 360 uh, model. So I will not change that. I think that was the way to go at the beginning and it's still the way to go when you open a new country. No, so I, I don't think that the problem was uh, was there. I think that what you need to do is, um, what I will do, you know, uh, immediately if, uh, if I would start again is uh, uh, set the process to say, hey, you know, when we have early indications that we are getting to a saturated uh, portfolio, what we need to do is to immediately put a process there to, uh, you know, start to split. And when we split, we immediately have to, sorry, we immediately have to go for, um, you know, like this type of incentives and this type of processes, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, if we start again, I, I would do the same, just like react faster, you know, when you see that there is a time for a change. Okay. Oh, that's good. Uh, and like you mentioned earlier, like it's not that you could do this from one day to the other. It was no. a process uh, with a lot of iterations in it. And uh, and so are you still now today tweaking and optimizing the current uh, setup? Or are you saying like, no, now I think we have found it. This is, this is strong. No, no, you have to continue also because uh, what you have done in a country may not up apply exactly in the same way to another country so you do have the idea but uh, you know like and you know where you want to go but then you have to make tweaks no like uh, in uh, in the different countries and then even in the countries where you're already operating with a two diff- two separate team you still have to uh, you know keep looking at what's going on because one year is going good one year is not going good and therefore like maybe you have to change something maybe you have to shuffle the portfolios uh, maybe you have to you know just always something that you have to do you cannot relax uh, because otherwise uh, um, ultimately it's not going to work i think that i think that's a good mindset indeed right. um so i don't know if if you can share about this but i was also interested like for example the the onboarding um that's deep on the one hand but also very strict on the other because you cannot go to certain steps if you don't pref- i mean fulfill the the first one so what was like the 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 tech that you kind you you used to actually make that work yeah, so in the end, uh, you, you have an onboarding that is done uh, between the two teams, as I was mentioning before, no? That's a, a, that's a slightly, let's let's put it like this, it's a slightly easier onboarding because in the end, everybody is working, you know, on the on the same platform and, uh, you know, like in the end, it's, it's relatively easy to share information, you know? Um, technically, it's two platforms in the sense that uh, our sales team is working with Salesforce and then, you know, the rest of the team is working on our own uh, product, but the two products are connected. So, you know, like it's relatively easy to share the information between uh, between one another, no? So that first part is uh, relatively easy if there are like, you know, there are checks, no? If there are like some missing field or something that is not clear, then, you know, some alarm will come up and then, you know, you, you go and check with the relevant person, you know, what, what needs to be fixed, no? In the in the case of the um, of the uh, customer, it's not so different in the sense that we have been uh, building in our platform uh, a, a number of uh, you know information that needs to be triggered from the client. Some information will be automatic. Some other information will be uh, done by push. You know, like uh, and sitting with the clients and uh, and understanding like uh, what is the difference in versus the standard process. But um, the key thing is that uh, all of that is then codified and clearly stored in our main platform. Um, until we had that, there were issues. Yeah. Once that is done, you know, which is already done now in the platform, uh, I would say that it's relatively easy. So I don't think we're having a lot of, is- uh, of issues on the board. I can understand people who do not have this setup uh, have an issue because yeah. it's a lot of information and it's very easy to miss it and it's very easy to have it corrupted. That I can and understand. That's, but that's the source That's the source of everything for the account exactly. manager. So. Once you have it in your product um, and it's well codified, I, I think that it's it's okay. I mean, it's not like, it's not a headache on the day-to-day. Interesting. If, if people want to implement also such a transformation, would you say they have to focus first on onboarding 
or first on having a right remuneration system in place? What would you say was more detrimental to the transformation? I mean, you're talking about on one side uh, sharing of knowledge and on the other side uh, um, cooperation between uh, between the team. They they really go together. I I I. I I, I don't have an answer for that, but but why you will not be able to do it together in the end of remuneration? It's something that goes more like with uh, with your HR policy, no? Um, whereas the onboarding it goes more like with your uh, uh, normally in a tech company with your product because you want to store the information in your own product, not that that's relevant information. So this two separate team, I mean, you should be able to do those together. Sorry, don't want to be too aggressive. No, on that's that. good. That's in good. It, it's two teams. You should be able to do that you know, yeah. at the same time. No, I was just trying to understand, like, if there would be an order of of making it work. But I, I get it. You you probably just want to make it both at the same time when you do the transition. I think you. I think you need both. Yes, I think you need both because uh, imagine if you have a situation. I mean, you could live with an incentive system that is on out hundred percent, knowing that your performance is not going to be stellar. You could. You cannot live with a poor onboarding because then you're going to miss knowledge and uh, that creates issues, okay? So if you put it like this, the second one is needed, you know, like uh, the, the the first one is good to have. Yeah, good. Um, I think in the preparation, you also mentioned something about, um, that's something that you started initially, but then removed that was competition between the hunting and the farming team, if I'm not mistaken. Can you kind of explain that because maybe some people might think that they would also try to experiment that but I think you have already did so so maybe we take away from your experience I think that the initial idea rather than uh, cooperation it was just like uh, you know um, digital team that you do in sales you know like everything uh, have all the performances like public you know so that uh, people can see like uh, um, how how each one is performing, uh, even how much they're making, you know, like in terms of uh, commissions, bonuses, uh, et cetera, you know, like, uh, but that was not generating a good environment because uh, first of all, the roles are different. Uh, the remunerations are different uh, according to the role, according to maturity, et cetera. Um, the, the, the difficulty is different. I'm not saying that one is more difficult than the other. It's just that like, the type of effort that you have to put uh, uh, is different. So. Um, it was hardly comparable, you know, like say it, it doesn't work, the competition in this case. I, I've seen competition working in other cases, but in, in this case, it was not really applicable. So so we soon realized that it was not competition, it was cooperation, what we had to generate. Yeah, no, fair enough. Well, Giuseppe, I don't know if there is anything else you want to mention about this uh, this process, because otherwise I think we have reached the end of this interview. I think the last thing I would add is that uh, you have to try, you know, like uh, if uh, if something is uh, is not working or uh, uh, not working up to the level where you want to be, uh, you you have to try, you know, you have to experiment and you have not to be afraid of uh, losing neither people of your team uh, nor like uh, business opportunities, because if you don't try, if you don't keep experimenting, you, you will never know. So uh, I remember, you know, at the beginning it was like, uh, Oof, we're going to change the role of the people. Oof, we're going to change the bonus system. Oof, you know, like a lot of uh, worries around uh, what will uh, be the reaction of the people, what will be the reaction of the client, etc. And if you start to think like that, you know, then you, you stay with, with your status quo, which might be okay for some people, for some other not. And, uh, you know, if, if it's not, you, you have to try. Right. I think that's uh that's a great spirit to end the podcast with. Just try, make it happen. Change is not always easy, but when it's necessary, you just gotta do it. Yeah, um, and if you fail, you will find another way. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So if there is any way that you can use this platform for uh, you know, job and talent, uh, you know, maybe there are some job openings at job and talent right now, maybe you're looking for new sales reps, new hunters, new farmers. So, you know, what would be the call to action that you would like to share through this platform? So uh, if there are people, we're always looking for good salespeople. So if there are people that are interested, <laughs> please just uh, you know visit the website and uh, and look after uh, you know like the the um, uh, the openings that we that we have. On the other side, uh, we also have workers, as I was telling you. So you know like if if you're not like a potential candidate, but you're a company looking for, um, especially in blue collar, 
uh, also pay a visit to the you know to, to our platform because uh, it's uh, it's very easy to use uh, very direct you know like and um, and you may be surprised about uh, you know how we can make your life uh, better <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you, Giuseppe. It was uh, it was very pleasure to have you on the show. I wish you nothing but the best, and see you next time. Thanks a lot to you, Lilan, and all the best for you guys as well. Okay, bye. That's it. We've once again reached the end of an episode. I just really appreciate you all spending the time. If you like what you heard, don't forget to subscribe to the podcasts. And until next week with a fresh new episode.